Autonomic function disorders affect our involuntary body functions and can be difficult to diagnose and treat. One such disorder is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS. Darren Rosner is a 35-year-old veteran who developed symptoms while serving as a pilot in the military. What it means in a nutshell is that when you get up, when you go from sitting to standing, everything in your body adjusts accordingly so that your blood pressure doesn't hardly change at all. Your veins kind of lock up in your legs and in your extremities. Your heart may speed up just a little bit, but for someone with POTS, that blood control isn't really there as much. So a lot of the blood will either stay pooled or it will eventually pool or um, cause your heart to have to work too hard to keep that blood pressure to your head and eventually you just fall down because you pass out. The overwhelming thing for me is fatigue. You can't sleep, but you're so tired you can't hardly move. Dr. Lawrence Kinsella is a neurologist with SSM Neurosciences Institute at St. Clair Health Center. He treats Darren and other patients with autonomic function disorders. The autonomic nervous system is involved with the control of automatic functions of the body that we don't even think about. Blood pressure, heart rate, breathing, um, bowel, bladder function, sexual function, sweating. These are all functions that we have no actual voluntary control over for the most part and are on autopilot, if you will. Patients with various autonomic function disorders exhibit many of the same symptoms as POTS. The most common reason the patients come in, as I, as I put it, they walk through the dizzy door. They come in because very often they're dizzy, lightheaded, they may have had recurrent episodes of fainting, what we call syncope. They may have had episodes of very fast heart rate and fatigue, exercise intolerance. These symptoms are somewhat nonspecific and uh, quite common and are often a diagnostic challenge for the primary care physician. And many of these patients have seen multiple physicians by the time they come here to the autonomic laboratory. The point with Dr. Kinsella, it was totally different than anything I've ever experienced because he knew what POTS was. He knew more about POTS than I did. Even other neurologists that, that I've talked to, they have to go look it up later. Mr. Rosner came uh, to the lab. We did a tilt table testing. We were able to demonstrate that in addition to having a very high heart rate immediately upon standing, his heart rate went up and stayed up very high and then all of a sudden heart rate dropped and blood pressure dropped and he developed vasovagal syncopes. Vasovagal syncope is a loss of consciousness caused by a sudden drop in heart rate and blood pressure and is the most common cause of fainting. So he had a combination of POTS, postural tachycardia syndrome, then followed by vasovagal syncope. And that combination is, is quite common. After the diagnosis, treatment starts with non-medication options such as a graded exercise program. The muscles in the legs are the ones that push the blood back to the heart. So getting stronger legs is an important first step. Mr. Rosner, like many others with his condition, quickly become very deconditioned because they can't stand to stand can't walk, they can't, they can't get around and do their daily activities, and he is a full-time stay-at-home dad, so this is extremely challenging for him. I definitely have more stamina than I did before. It's not, you know, not perfect by any stretch, but um, I don't have the headaches that I used to have. Getting his graded exercise, which he does religiously, has helped him achieve uh, more than a 50% uh, improvement, and actually uh, very often as much as 80% improvement. Once we've moved off uh, the non-pharmacologic things, which includes exercise and countermaneuvers and constrictive stockings and an abdominal binder, then we talk about medications. Medications such as beta blockers have been successful in treating POTS. The last thing you want to do is get up and exercise. But what the beta blockers done, and, and definitely with, you know, with his help and kind of encouragement too, is it allows me to exercise. I don't spend days on end in bed like I used to. While POTS isn't curable, Darren is getting treatment that will give him more energy and more time to do the things that are important to him. These disorders are manageable, if not necessarily curable, we certainly can manage them. And my goal for patients is to get them to at least 50% of their previous level of function. And very often they do much better than that, but it's important to set reasonable expectations of outcome. So once we've done that, you can be very successful at managing these individuals. I have nothing but, I mean, nothing but great things to say about Dr. Kinsella's office. I definitely feel like I'm in good hands. Let's put our brains together to cure brain disease. Visit curebraindisease.org.